how I went from $60,000 a year to making almost half a million dollars per year in total compensation in less than five years. So with this one, let's talk about my story. I want to go over the last decade, what I've been up to and how I've gotten to this point of running Data Engineer Academy in my, my full day-to-day -day job now. I want to go back all the way to college, so almost a decade ago. Really at that point, I was a math major actually. So I wasn't even a uh, computer science major. And so I actually ended up going the math and economics route after going in originally as a pre-med person. And that uh, journey as a pre-med, just as a side story, I was very good as a math STEM logic guy. And for some reason I could not memorize things for fun, I was not going to do well as a, uh, a doctor, let's put it that way. So long story short, I go the math and economics route and I'm, I'm freaking out in the sense that I can't even figure out what kind of job you can get after being a math major. This is how ignorant I was. Long story short, I end up getting a math and economics double major, almost got a comp sci minor, but where really started to churn or turn into the uh, data world is I started getting some internships in the data space. And this is when I was like, okay, this is probably the route I'm going to go down. I'm going to go get some, you know, data courses at school. I went to Boston College. The crazy part was there were no data courses in college. So I actually ended up sneaking into graduate level courses while I was still an undergrad just because I wanted to learn. I figured, you know, if I'm going to get credits or, or I'm going to spend the money to get credits, I might as well not spend the money to get not credits that I actually want to learn about. And so I ended up looking up this course called uh, Machine Learning. And at the time, it was very, very, very new. So I ended up going to sneaking into courses with machine learning. And long story short, I ended up uh, using that knowledge to get a job as a data analyst at Amazon. So this is where I started my career. I was making close to sixty, seventy thousand dollars total compensation. This includes signing bonus, salary, equity. Now, again, big misconception because a lot of you who have not worked at companies where they give out equity are like, you know, there's no way you can make four or five, six hundred grand a year. It's possible. You just have to be in the right company. I have a friend actually making about a million a year right now because he joined a company that pff, their stock went like this. So uh, I'll keep his name private. But the bigger lesson here is that I was there for about six months at a team before I got switched to a different team. And this is where I started doing data engineering work. However, my title was still a data analyst. And so the reason I bring this up is because a lot of you are so focused on the title that you won't even apply for a job or won't, won't even try to, you know, see if you can squeeze yourself into a new role at a new company because titles don't really matter, right? At the end of the day, what matters is if you can get to an interview and show them that you know what you're doing and know what you're talking about, they'll hire you. What you know matters so much more than your title, right? Because a lot of you are waiting to get promoted just because you think it looks good on paper. It doesn't. And so if you take away one thing from this video, it's you get hired based on four hours of spending time talking to a person. It could be the recruiter for one hour, the hiring manager for one hour, an engineer for another hour, right? another engineer for a different hour. My point is you get hired based on the interview, four hours of the interview. And the reason I'm bringing this up as I, as I tell you about my journey is because I never did certificates. I never did a Coursera course. And I get it. Some of you might be like, well, isn't that the easy way to you know learn new skills? Yeah, but it won't get you the job, right? I have, I have a mentor that calls it mental masturbation, right? It's, it's, a lot of learning, but no babies, right? So, you know, you're wasting all this time doing certificates, thinking that the certificate is going to look good on a resume. But again, somebody's going to hire you based on what they perceive of you in four hours of talking to you, maybe five, maybe six, right? But you get my point, right?
right? You're gonna go through some interview rounds and then they're gonna say, okay, I really like this person, I really don't. And by the way, yes, biases do matter, right? It's not just whether they know SQL, whether they know the tech stuff, it's like, no, they're gonna decide whether they wanna work with you. And so keep that in mind because that really, really, really matters when they make a hiring decision. A lot of you are way too focused on the technical. It's like, I need to know everything about system design and Snowflake and Databricks and Iceberg. And yes, some of that stuff is important, not as much as you think it is. But anyway, I was making about 60, 70 grand. I switched to a different team inside of Amazon, uh, started doing some data engineering work. And after, honestly, two and a half, maybe even three years, I started making about 130,000 as a data engineer at Amazon, an official data engineer. I got promoted horizontally. Here's why I started this company. This part is really, really important. I realized that your success in your career progression is really dependent on your team, your manager, and your company. I was at a good company, but I unfortunately didn't really have the best manager. In fact, my manager kind of didn't care. Maybe he's watching this, but so what? He never really, and by the way, I had, I had like four managers in the first two years. And so my first manager, you know, didn't play a role because I got switched to a different team. So it's not his fault. Uh, eventually I got under a manager who's very high up at Amazon and he got me promoted to that data engineer role. But then I had a few in between that kind of just didn't care, or didn't have, I guess, maybe any say, you know, maybe I shouldn't say he didn't care, maybe he just didn't have a say. I don't know, but there's a lot of bureaucracy as you go up, uh, you know, the levels at Amazon. But the shitty part there was that I was working harder, I knew more things than most of my colleagues, and I kept seeing my colleagues just make more and more and more on, on different teams. And I'm like, there's something's wrong, something's broken here. Eventually I make it to 130. And by the way, a little side note, I actually, was very lucky to have friends on that team that were pseudo mentors that taught me a bunch of data engineering stuff, a, lot, a bunch of cloud stuff, a bunch of ETL stuff, because my manager wasn't even technical. So he didn't even know this stuff. So I had to go learn from other managers and bug my data scientist friends and bug my DE friends. Um, and I, I, I say that because I know, again, a lot of you listening might feel like you're at a place or at a company or on a team that you're like, I'm stuck. There's, there's no light. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. I have no promotion inside. I have no, you know, nobody to learn from. I have no projects that are going to fall on my plate where I can learn something new. I'm falling behind. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a dinosaur very soon. I, I get it. I was there for about half my time at Amazon, right? A year, year and a half. The other part was great. I was learning. And, and finally, after asking, you know, that middle, the, the, the second or third manager I had, after asking that person to get promoted four times, after getting pushed back, he's like, hey, next quarter, next quarter, right? I heard this for over a year. Again, some of you might be there. You know, I finally got promoted and finally got to the place where I wanted to be as a data engineer. And finally, I was making 130. And again, this is three years in and, and my friends are making two, 250, 300. And I'm like, what the hell just happened? And this is where I learned the thing I wish I would have known from the start. Like I said, your manager, your team matters more than even the company you're working at. And so I actually ended up switching to a different company and they were paying me over 200 grand a year, total compensation. They gave me a shot. They knew I knew some of the things, not all the things they needed, but they knew I knew most of it. Again, I had to sell myself on the interview, if I'm being honest. And eventually I was making over 200 grand there. A year later, went to Lyft got an offer for about 350 total compensation. So when I say total compensation, again, for those of you that don't know, it's going to be salary, it's going to be signing bonus, it's going to be equity. Now, here's the crazy part. And by the way, this happened quickly. I was at that startup for about a year. After that, I went to Lyft, worked there for almost two years, maybe. Here's the crazy part. When I was making that 350 at Lyft, they had given me so much stock because what companies tend to do is they tend to put a cap to a base. So let's just say, if, to keep the numbers simple, most companies will not pay you a base higher than 200, but your total compensation will keep growing 
I don't want to say infinite, but kind of infinite, right? Because you might get three, four, five, six, seven hundred grand in total compensation, but difference from that two hundred and that whatever you earn is going to be mostly in stock. And here's why that matters. Because if you join a good company and the stock goes up, by the time you actually finish that one year mark, that two year mark, that three year mark, the stock might have gone up 50, 100, 150, 200%. So that's what happened with me. And I ended up making close to 450 at Lyft. Now, the irony is that because I stayed there long enough, I also saw the stock go down, right? And so you can look at the Lyft chart. It got ugly at some point. It got good at some point. It, it, you know, it's not like NVIDIA that's just been going up for the last five years, you know, depending on when you're watching this video. But, you know, my point is you can get paid a lot up front because, again, $200,000 salary is nothing to sneeze at, right? But the company you're at, and if it's successful and if they give you equity, which they will as you become more and more of a senior engineer, can really, really, really blow up and make you earn a significant more amount than if you just worked at some random company that paid you a salary and then said, hey, next year you're going to get promoted to get 10% more, 20% more, right? You're very, very capped is what I'm trying to say. And so long story short, it's how I went from making 60, 70 to over 400, almost, almost half a mil. And what I started to realize was that that story, that pain point, if you will, is something that a lot of people go through and not just in the tech industry and in, in every kind of industry. And so I've said this before and I'll say it again, you know, my journey with starting this company is because I was on a Reddit thread, I was giving free advice and I realized that my advice was really, really helpful because I had gone through what that person was going through. And I started getting DMs in my uh, Reddit profile, my Reddit account, asking me for help. And then eventually some guy was like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you for it. I'll pay you for help. I'll pay you for mentorship. And I actually had a different mentor almost 10 years ago doing the same thing, but with data science. And for anybody in the industry, in the data industry, you guys know data science was the sexiest job 10 years ago. Uh, you know, very, very big. Um, and it's kind of, you know, data engineering, I don't want to say data engineering has taken its place, but there's a lot more demand from companies for data engineers and a lot less supply, right? The reason is because data blew up. Everybody wanted to be a data scientist. So a lot of people learned those skills, et cetera, but not that many people have learned the data engineer skills yet. They'll get there, right? It'll, it'll probably, I don't know, three, six, nine years away before uh, there's a lot more people that have actually learned those skills, but the demand is also going up higher. The amount of data is also exploding. And so long story short, because I had gone through that experience with that mentor and because I had, I'm, I was seeing the trends on Reddit, I was seeing the Reddit group, you know, kind of blow up, um, in, in size, I said to myself, you know what, there might be a company here. There might be an opportunity. And so one thing led to another, started selling the program, started talking to customers, started to realize what they wanted, became customer obsessed about, hey, if I were to build a company, what is it that they really want? Very simple. They just don't want another Coursera course or boot camp, right? Again, learning is great, but if they can't say like, hey, I learned and then I got an outcome, i.e. a job or i.e. a better career or a higher pay, something, a promotion at work, something, then customers don't want it, right? And so, um, again, the money's great, but I think the reason I say the story is because it ties back to the front of my story, which is I didn't have to spend three years at Amazon stuck. And I think that a lot of people think that they do. They think that they have to stay quote unquote stuck because that's just how it's always been done work for the same company, 40 years, wait to get promoted, climb the corporate ladder. But you can switch companies and yeah, it's a little scary. I, I get it. Uh, you know, I was terrified of losing the stability, but you don't really lose the stability if you 
go and make 50, 100 percent more at your next role, even if you got fired. Right. So the reason I'm saying that is because it's a real, real hack to get a raise by switching companies. And it's a dirty little secret that I feel like all these tech influencers haven't really said out loud. And I don't know why, but again, if you're in demand, big tech companies will pay you a little more than what you're making to poach you. And then the next one will do the same after you. And then the next one, and then it kind of just waterfalls. And next thing you know, your minimum compensation is based on what you were making at your previous company. And that might be four five, six, you know, a million dollars a year. I'm not saying like, if you're completely new to the industry that you're going to make 500 grand in five years, um, that's not what I'm saying. You have to put in the work and you do have to, you know, be strategic about it. But I think that hopefully somebody watching this is saying, okay, it's possible. So let me give it a shot. Because again, I, for all the people that are scared about AI or tech, you know, ruining the industry, you know, if tech gets ruined, then I think most things are going to get ruined, right? Or disrupted. I, I think tech is going up more than anything, especially data. I don't need to, you know, talk about how much data is getting created every second. So Anyways, that's my story. I hope it helps somebody. I hope it inspires somebody. And if you ever need anything, just go ahead and comment on this video below. Um, I would appreciate a share, spread the message, because I think that a lot of people get imposter syndrome thinking that, you know, they don't have what it takes to make four or 500 grand a year. When in reality, it's like, hey, just get your foot in the door, take it easy. And I think you'll be surprised by how much progress you make over not that long of a, of a time span three four five years it's not that long you know when you really put it into perspective so cheers good night